It all started quite young. I mean, I was one of those kids who just wanted to be an astronaut <laughs> and looked up at the stars and wanted to go there and found it just amazing. Uh, then, as it turns out, I was good at maths and physics, so that played very well into the idea of actually having a career in space. And yeah, I just kept going through college and kept picking the courses that I liked and enjoyed. And they also happened to be ones that involved space. So and eventually I ended up getting a PhD and that actually opens up a lot of doors for you to continue research obviously in uh, this sector. Well I guess my job at the moment is actually looking at any new technologies or anything that comes up new and seeing if there's any relevance to space um, and some of the ideas we've come up in our group involve a relativistic, a relativistic positioning system um, so like GPS, but in s whereas GPS just assumes a flat space, um, our ORPS system actually assumes that space is curved because that's what Einstein's equations actually dictates. Um, and so I guess in GPS you say you time everything from the ground and assume a flat space and you add corrections. And what we're looking at is maybe hanging the time frame in space um, with this system. Uh, so that's one of the things we're working on as well. We look at uh, mathematical formulations to, I'm sure people have heard of invisibility cloaks and stuff like that where you bend the light rays around objects. So what we've looked at is bending uh, acoustics around objects. So you're actually deflecting noise because when you shoot a rocket into space, uh, the noise actually causes a lot of damage. <laughs> Other things I'm involved in is um, modeling black hole binary systems. So if you have two black holes come near each other and they start to collide, they don't just bang into each other, they tend to go into a very complicated rotating system. And uh, we involve involved into modeling some of that. I mean, my group, okay, where I think we're maybe 40% girls, maybe 30, which is quite high. I mean, coming from, I come from an applied maths or mathematical physics background where I think, I mean, I go to conferences and, you know, it's me and one other girl. Um, you just get used to it. Uh, and I think the numbers are improving. But uh, no, I don't I actually think it's better here than it is in <laughs> other fields. So, but no, there's no, no hardness against being a girl here, I don't, I don't find. Yeah, I would definitely recommend a career in science to, to girls and women who are thinking about it. I mean, like I said, I have friends who did undergraduate courses and ended up going into finance and accounting, and I know they regret it. They say it all the time when I meet up with them. Because um, you just have this kind of ongoing, exciting you know, world around you all the time. You don't really know where you're going to end up next, what country you're going to live with, live in, who you're going to meet at the next conference, um, what results you're going to... I mean, I once started off doing a student exercise and you know a few months later it went really well and it turns out it was actually a big part of a piece of puzzle other people were trying to find so it ended up being presented at a conference and being part of my thesis so you never know what's going to happen and um, so it's exciting it's an exciting life and you get to travel loads <laughs> so it's good challenges you definitely have to get used to being the only girl in the room. Um, I went to an all-girls school, so going from an all-girls school to sitting, I think, in my first lecture theater, I think there was 100 people and maybe five girls, maybe seven. Um, so you just have to get used to that. I mean, people are going to comment on you being the only girl as well, but you just have to learn how to brush it off. Um, it helps if you like football. <laughs> um, but generally, I think, yeah, just being determined and knowing, yeah, sometimes people are going to go, well, you're the girl, someone must have helped you to have, got, to have gotten to this stage. And just, you know, prove that sh that's not the case. Which also comes with its, you know, satisfaction of being able to prove that. No, I earned this. To me, if you want to be successful in research, you have to actually uh, travel the world and, and go 
to all the places where all the experts are and meet up with everybody to discuss because everyone's based around the world. Um, so even during my studies, I spent time in London and Paris um, and as well as Dublin. Um, and I never expected to stay in Ireland if I wanted to do research. I knew I had to leave. So the way it was for me, it was like I applied for several postdocs and then when you get back your answers, you're like, okay, these are the, this is the country I'm going to live in. As far as moving to the Netherlands, I mean, ESA makes it really easy for you. It's also a country that's pretty much bilingual, so everyone speaks English, which helps a lot. Um, I really like traveling anyway and experiencing new cultures, so I mean, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I kind of like the adventure of it.